18283 couple of days review test. So this is the last one. Those of you that have fallen behind on the homework, well, you're going to want to run alongside the homework train, grab hold, pull yourself on, and ride. Get her done this weekend. You're done. All right, rational functions and their graphs. Wasn't that what we did yesterday? Yeah, it was. We're going to continue. There are all types, lots of different types, of hyperbolic functions. We're going to start seeing that today, but they're, they're just crazy. I mean, they really are. There's lots of things that can happen. So we're going to identify properties of rational functions, and eventually, we're not going to do a whole lot with graphing today, but we're going to graph the rational functions. So, take a look at this. This is where we have somebody that's uh, having a rough start in the basketball season. Last season, you made 40% of your basketball shots. Probably not fun. The game one shot chart shows that you did not start the season so well. <clears throat> the little green ones are the ones that were made. There's only three of them on there that were made. So, you vow that starting game two, you will make every shot from here on out the rest of the season. And you want to know how long is it going to take to raise your percentage up to where you want it. First of all, you'd like it back at the 40% that you had last year. Right now, you're shot you want it So here's the deal. Did you count how many Cheerio looking things there are up there? This was a bad start. They made three. I don't know how many. 16. Ooh. But here's the vow. The vow is I'm going to take more shots. I'm making every single one. But you know, that's how people. Well, okay. It's highly improbable. Or it's possible, but highly improbable. Especially since you shot 40% last year. So this is. What you make, well, now we've just increased your total because you just took more shots. You know? And that's a rational function. Percentages are rational functions. Percentages are all about what you want to happen divided by the total that's going to happen. And that's, that's what that is. Now, we are not at a point where this would be a good problem for us to do. And that's because we don't know enough about rational functions just yet. So we're going to leave this set up. We'll come back when we know more about rational functions and finish this up. But right now we just need to know that this is definitely a real world type situation where people want to see how am I going to do it. In fact, it has just become crazy in sports to have people that document every little thing you do and keep track of it number wise so that they can tell you ways to improve. You know, it's, it's just one of the things they really, really do now. They didn't get to that. We didn't have as many statisticians back in the old days, but didn't have computers or even stuff. Now, it says, we will use a ratio of polynomial functions to forming rational functions. Anytime we put polynomials in a division situation, we are talking about a rational function. So, that's what this is. And if you want to graph it, we could do that. If a function has a polynomial in its denominator, its graph, now, the gap that we had talked about so far is an asymptote. That was the one that we had talked about. Was, hey, it's never going to make it here. It's going to get super duper close, but it's never quite going to get there. Turns out, some graphs also have holes in them. You're graphing along, la -di -da -da, all of a sudden, there's a hole here. It happens. So, if a function has a polynomial in its denominator, its graph has a gap. And we know where it's going to happen at the zero of that denominator. That's where it's going to happen. And that gap could be a hole in the graph. But it also could be the things we've talked about before, which are the vertical asymptotes. So today is about learning where do we find them? How do we know if they're a hole or a vertical asymptote? That's what today's about. Adding a few little, little pieces to what we already know about graphing. Rational functions. So a rational function is a function that you can write f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are just any polynomial, you know, anything with x's in it that you would want to use. And then, go 
domain. Remember, vertical asymptotes and domains are hooked together. Because if we say something that something is an asymptote, it can't be used. And that's why we say for the domain, hey, you can't use this thing. Because that's what an asymptote tells us. So those two things are linked together and they all come from right there. We can't divide by zero. So if we're putting a number in that makes us divide by zero, we can't do that. That's where our asymptotes come from. So like it says, here are the graphs of three different rational functions. Very cool ones, by the way. This element always makes me think of the Disney Channel. If you ever saw um, The Little Mermaid, in the background, when they have that movie, they have the little seagulls way, way far off that you can't see. Take the arrows off of here. That's a seagull. That's all it takes. Yeah. Well, you don't really see the seagull. You just see the little objects coming towards you, and you kind of think, oh, it's a bird. Maybe it's going to fly. You know, it looks like that. So this is really easy to make show up. And all we would have to do is say, okay, we don't want it to go forever, so let's tell the computer from negative 4 to 4, wrap that for me. You know, that's, that's what they do. And then they use the animation to move it. Oh, look at that middle one. We have not done that yet. That one has a hole. It looks like a needle, you know, where you would thread a needle if you were going to sew. So why did that happen? Hmm. Well, look at that. Those two would cancel out, wouldn't they? And I think, okay, well, what would that do to our zero in the denominator? Because the zero was x equals negative 2. That made a hole. So if our zero from the denominator can cancel out, then it's just a hole. It's not a vertical asymptote. I go over this one. This looks like exactly what we're doing. We've been doing this. We have an asymptote right here at x equals 2, because this is going by 2s. We've been doing that. The other asymptote is going to take us another day or so to get to that uh, horizontal asymptote. But this is what I now know. If it cancels, it's a hole. So the question is, stuff. I mean, look at this. This had an x squared on the top and the bottom. Can I do that? No. Canceling is a form of division. You can only divide if you see pure multiplication. That's not pure multiplication. It's a plus one right here. I can't cancel that. That's the usual straight up one you get. x squared and x squared. A lot of people would look at that and say, hey, let's just cancel those out. Undo multiplication with division. That's not multiplication. That's addition. Also, though, the x is the third x squared x plus one. There are some situations that we're going to see where we'll be able to do that. It's more like this, Jackson. If we had that. Then you can cancel it. Right, because everything. Is multiplication. These are being multiplied, and this is just an x squared up here. So no pluses, no minuses. You can cancel. It works. Sorry. It is a y to the negative one. But if we're reducing it, we're just going to cancel out the x squared. No big deal. So here, the only reason we can do the canceling is because these two addition pieces match each other. Can see the parentheses and we see that that's multiplication. It's multiplication, we can cancel, it works. And in the third one over there, x plus 4 and x minus 2, there's no way to factor that. It's already in the factored form, so we can't cancel anything. But what's important is that once we have them factored, it's really easy to see where those zeros are for the denominator. Wait a minute. It's got an x in the denominator, it should have a zero, right? So let's check it out. When will x squared plus 
plus 1 equals 0. How do you solve that? You do, you subtract 1. How do you get rid of squaring something? Square root. What's the square root of negative 1? It is 100. We're not graphing on the imaginary plane. We're graphing on the real number plane. So if we get a non-real answer, we don't use it. So this doesn't have any. It doesn't have any other real numbers. If we were graphing in the complex plane, that would be different. But we're not. So it doesn't have any. So we are focused right now just on the denominator. Find the zeros of the denominator. The first graph that we saw up there that looked like the little uh, seagull off in the distance, it's called a continuous graph. Here's why. If I put my pencil down to draw that graph, I can just keep it on the paper. It stays right there. It's continuous. Never have to pick it up. It's not the case for the second. For the second graph, you're graphing along, and all of a sudden, ooh, i got to write a hole in here. I can't graph that, so you have to jump over the hole and go on. For the third graph, you make a branch. You pick your pencil up, and you got to move it to a new spot. So anytime you have to pick your pencil up, you don't have a continuous graph. The first one is. Second and third, those are called discontinuous. You have to pick your pencil up. So continuous graphs, pencil does it. Turn up, turn up, so I can put it in the page. Just go in the page. The hole is because the x, y, s, two are canceled. Get this next one up here so you guys can start. Jackson went boop, boop, boop on his. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Especially for that. <laughs> what if it was a real emergency? Mom, he was texting his mom. Will you make turkey for dinner tonight? Mom did. <laughs> Alrighty. If A is a real number for which the denominator of a rational function is zero, then A is not in the domain of f of x. This we already know. Asymptotes, you got to leave them out of the domain. Cannot use them. So they are called points of discontinuity. Now I'm not going to write out points of discontinuity every time we do these. I'm going to use POD, P-O-D, P-O-D, point of discontinuity. Vertical asymptotes are considered P-O-Ds, <coughs> points of discontinuity. So are holes. Holes are considered points of discontinuity. So the second graph that we saw that had the hole, the reason it had the hole was because the x plus 2s can cancel out. Now this gets interesting. It says the graph of that has a removable discontinuity because the hole in the graph could be filled in. Huh. So they are saying there's a mathematical way for somebody to come along and say, you know what? Here's how you fill the hole. Come back here. Tell everybody that when you put a negative 2 into this function, you want them to graph a 1. So they'd have this equation, and you could add this one, and then people would fill the hole in. So that's called a removable discontinuity. Just remember this. If you can remove it by canceling, it's a removable discontinuity. Cancel it out. 
it's removable. And it's a hole. If we cannot cancel it out, it's a vertical asymptote. And those we know we can't use. We can't use those numbers. Here and there. We can't. So if it cancels, it's a hole. And it's a removable discontinuity. If it doesn't cancel, it's a vertical asymptote. And that's not removable. Vertical asymptotes are just there to stay. So to find the zeros of the numerator and the denominator, we definitely want to factor them first. Because if we see one that cancels, we know it's a whole. The discontinuity caused by that factor, if we have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, that is a removable discontinuity. If it can cancel, it's removable. If it won't cancel, it's not removable. It's as easy as that. Makes perfect sense to me. Can I remove the x plus ones? Yes. It's removable. It's a whole. Okay. We're going to make them look like this. We're going to factor. <laughs> Foiling is the opposite way. Yeah, where we multiply them off. We want to factor so we can see if they cancel. Let's see if there's a hole. All right, let's get started. We've got a lot of points of discontinuity to find here, along with various other things. Look at those monsters. Yeah? Is this already factored? No. So that's the first thing we better try, so let's try it. x plus 3 is factored. But how about x squared minus 4x plus 3? Did you already find it? Jeff says is x minus 3 and x minus 1. Multiply to 3, add to negative 1. There's our first step. Here's what they want us to do. What are the domain points of discontinuity? Are the points of discontinuity removable or non-removable? What are the x and the y intercepts? Oh my goodness. Well, let's start here at the pods. Points of discontinuity, those are the zeros of the denominator. So what are our bad numbers for this one? Three and one. Are they going to cancel? They are non-removable. That means they're vertical asymptotes. I know it didn't ask us that, but that is huge for tomorrow. So I'm going to put my little VA right there. They're not going to cancel. They're non-removable. They're vertical asymptotes. All right. What are the domain and points of discontinuity? Well, that's easy to do. We just said there's two x's you can't use because they're asymptotes. Three and one. So whatever you have for asymptotes or points of discontinuity, you can't use as a domain. All right. Domain. Points of discontinuity, are they removable or non-removable? We already did that. X and Y intercepts. Ooh, that sounds hard. Oh, it's not a domain. Here's why. If we want the X and Y intercepts, here's what we need to do. For the X intercept, we need to figure out when would this be zero. Well, we already talked about the fact that this gives us all the answers for vertical asymptotes and holes. There's only one way to make this zero. The zero has to be on the top. So to find the x-intercept, we need to figure out what's going to make x plus 3 equal to zero. What is it? Negative 3. So it's the point negative 3, 0. Sometimes I think this y-intercept is even easier. Here's why. For the y-intercept, we make x equal to 0. That means wherever you see an x, it's 0, and it's gone. So I go back up here and say, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0, what's left? 3 over 3, just 1. There's the x and y-intercept. So points of discontinuity all come from the bottom of the fraction. 
X intercept, half of the fraction. Y intercept, just cross off all the X's and see what you want. Well, sometimes it's a fraction, sometimes it's a percentage. For this, that came from right here, Jackson, the zero of the top. If we have to make all the x's zero, all the x's are gone. Three divided by three, one. No, remember this is zero, it's gone, because it had an x in it. Anything with an x is zero, it's gone. All right, let's go after B. Is that factor? Can we factor? Two numbers that multiply to one and add to zero. It's not factorable. Ooh. Okay, well then let's try this. Let's set it equal to zero and see if we can find out why. How do you solve it? Subtract one. And right away we see what the problem is, right? What are we going to get? We take the square root. It's i. So that's the reason we don't get any. So, points of discontinuity, none, doesn't have any more, doesn't have any vertical asymptotes. This is a seagull, that's what this is, so we don't get any. So the domain for this one is all real, it's because we did not find anything that can't be used. There were no points of discontinuity. So all we have left for this one is the x-intercept and the y-intercept, question for us. If we don't find any points of discontinuity, any zeros from the denominator, then you can put whatever you want in here. That's the only thing we can't do in math is divide by zero. That's the only thing. Alrighty, we need the x-intercept. It is 5, exactly, because 5 minus 5 would give you zero. So this is where the numerator equals zero. Do you remember how to do the y-intercept? How do you find the y-intercept? Put zeros in all the x's. What you got? Negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. And there it is. So, Here's what you want to get used to, and we're going to do these the same way every time. We're going to start by factoring. We go to the bottom. Where are those points of discontinuity? Are they vertical asymptotes, or will they cancel out? Are they both? Then we'll talk about the domain. If these are points of discontinuity, we can't use them. They're special. And then we'll go to the x-intercept, which is the top equaling zero, and the y-intercept, which is crossing off all the x's. See what we have. So it's bottom. Top, cross off the x's every time. Hey, this one looks like fun. Do you suppose that's factorable? It is. Okay, hang on, let me get ready. Did you find it already? What is the factorization? Plus to negative 4 adds to negative 3, right? Where are you going to find your pods? Bottom? Okay, Asher, pay attention. Get out a new color of marker or something. <laughs> What's the pod? 4. Is it? Why is it a hole? It will be removed. It will be canceled. This can cancel out. It is a hole. But it's also something we have to leave off the domain. 
they are not requiring that right now. We will be using that to the wall one day in the future. It is. Oh, you, you guys can look at this and tell me this is four. Logically, it makes sense though, because if it's removable, you can cancel it out. But no, look at it. Wouldn't you? I mean, algebra just from exponential algebra. If you think that, wouldn't you automatically cancel those? Wouldn't that be like the first thing you'd want to do? Yeah, we didn't have to. Removable. It's removable because you can cancel it. Not for. Remember, whatever we have as a point of discontinuity cannot be used because it'll make our denominator zero and you can't divide by zero. I just feel like there's a lot of ways to get fucked up. Yeah. Like I said, always do them the same way. Start down here and go up here. So so oh no, I have to remember more than two things at once. <laughs> no! Let's finish this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a minute. One minute on the clock, so it's now. X intercept. Where we got the domain? X doesn't need to work. <laughs> Anything that is a whole or an asymptote cannot be used. <laughs> All right. X intercepts go to the top. What are the zeros of the top? Four and negative one. But we already said we can't use four. So it's going to be negative one zero. Go back to the original, cross off all the x's, and tell me what it is. Zero. One. <laughs> negative four divided by negative four. Wouldn't we put the zeros in for the higher? Yeah, you could. You'll get the same answer. Really? Yep. No, you wouldn't. No, you do. You would definitely get one divided by negative four. <laughs> what? One divided by negative four. Okay. Oh, you'd, so you'd get a three over a negative four. Zero. Negative four times one is negative four divided by negative four. Negative four divided by negative four. Oh. oh. Like, if I you wait until we're done with, with the other set of examples, it's just that would be best. This is zero. All right, this is else. How do you get from one? Are we done? On Please. one intersection. I got a question. <laughs> I think okay. we all have a Put zero in here. Yep. This is negative four. Put zero in here. This is one. Negative four times one is negative four. Why would you multiply? Because the. Because that's what the parentheses mean. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. And okay. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So negative 4 over negative 4 is 1. That's so yes. much different than the ones before. Okay. Well, that's, that's why I said you all the way back up here, Nick. I know. Let's do that one. Let's do that one. I got a question. Oh, sorry. Jeff, I didn't mean for you to like, just think I forgot about that. Okay. Okay. Why wouldn't you use the factors on the cross on the x? You can. It, the but then you're making zero. But then you're. No, we just, we just explained this. Yes. Zero yes. minus four is negative four. Yes. Zero plus one is one. Yes. Negative four times one is negative four. <laughs> divided by zero minus four is negative four. Right. Negative four divided by negative four is one. Yep. Either way, <laughs> you'll get. All right. All right, let's do some more of these so it starts to stick a little better. Here we go. What do you do first? Factor. Is it factorable? Yes. Oh. It's that one special one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> X squared minus 16. Factor. Oh, what do you get? Jeez. You know what, Jeff? Okay. Let's focus. We're starting.
Start at the bottom with the pods. What are the pods? Negative four and four. Are they removable, Asher? Yes. No. 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 Why do we know? Because it's the bottom. Yeah. Why weren't there two? Since they're not removable, we can't use them, which means we can't use them in the domain. And I'll go ahead and do what Megan was saying, just a plus or minus. We have gotten everything we can get out of the bottom. Where do we go next? Yeah, for the x intercept. POD, leave it out. Is there any possible way we can make a 1, a 0, without a magic wand? No. We don't have an x-intercept. We don't have one. We need an x up there for us to be able to do anything. So it's, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's not. It's never going to hit it. So, what would you so there's only an x-intercept? None. So x-intercept? None. Thanks. Y intercept, go back to the original, not the factored one. Cross off the X's, see what's left. It's a fraction. What is it? One over two. Negative. Negative one sixteen. So zero, negative one sixteen. And that's by going back up here and saying that this is going to be zero. That's all that's left. Right there. That's good. That's not <laughs> yeah, that's really squashed. Zero, negative one sixteen. All right, you ready? Yeah. B. Factorable? Yes and no, right? The top one is. What is the top factor in two? Can you factor x squared plus three? No. No, there's not two numbers that multiply to three and add zero. Now, if you're thinking, okay, but I'm supposed to get the zeros of the denominator, I still am going to have to give this a try, then do it by algebra. The first thing you have to do is move that three over, and that's when you realize what? They're imaginary. It's not going to happen. No PODs. And if there's no PODs, those of you that have been rocking the domain, what does that mean about the domain? All reals. All reals. We put whatever we want in there. Non reals. <laughs> no, I said non. <laughs> oh, all reals. We put them all in there. I mean, technically, right? It's imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> Different problem. All right, now, how are we going to get the top of this to be zero? What numbers would we put in? Negative one and one. So plus or minus one zero. And then the y intercept. Go way up top. <laughs> we don't get any PODs because everything we had in our denominator was imaginary. Okay, take a peek. Go back up here. Zeros for your X's. What's left? One third. Negative one third. Wait, shouldn't the zero on the Oh, thank you. That was too bad. All right, let's take a peek. Factorable? Yeah. 
Bottom is baby? Yes. is removable because it would cancel. That makes it a whole. It is a whole. But there's another one down there. What's the other one? X equals negative 2. Are we going to be able to cancel that X plus 2 out? So that is non-removable. There's 2 now. Wait, why is there two? What? Look at your denominator. <laughs> yeah, I thought I oh, understand it. You did. You said that one's going to cancel. So that's the removable one. So there's still one more in the denominator. Why? That one. Right there. Right there. How can it be removable and not removable? They're not both removable. Just one. The one that you can't say. This one will cancel. Yeah. Whatever it is. Bless you. All right, domain. What numbers do we have to leave out? Uh, negative, one and negative, two. negative one and negative two. And now we need the x intercept and the y intercept. How do we get the top of this to be zero? By putting in a negative yeah, one. Yeah. Can we put in a negative one? Sure. Yeah. No, no we can't. No, we can't. You told so me we could. So you said zero. it was a whole. So it's none. none. Oh, that's not good. All that work you get nothing. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. How are you going to get the y-intercept? What do you do? Cross off all the X's. Cross off all the X's way up top. One half. One half. Now, it says if a rational function has a non-removable discontinuity, and I've talked to you about this all the way through, if it won't cancel, it's not a whole. So we always do these the same way. That way it becomes comfortable and it's just automatic when we do it. You get factor, you look at the bottom. Find your PODs. If they cancel their holes, if they don't, they're vertical asymptotes. Then we go to the top. We find the x-intercept. Where's the zero for the ring? And then we cross off all the x's and we find the y-intercept. Same way every time. <laughs> All righty, we are going to chop a couple of these off. Yeah, we're only going to five three. Five three. 